a verse that is one scripture but really tells the, the whole truth of who God is and how uh, magnificent our God is. Today we're looking at Psalms 144 and we're just looking at the very first verse. It said, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. For it is not, we know, by our strength, but by the strength of the Lord who is in us. For we know that stronger is he who is in us, right, than he who is in the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have a story to tell you that I come across. It says, The devil charged the gates of heaven. And as he approached, he saw that God, God's son Jesus, Saint Peter, and a man that the devil had never seen before all standing at the gate. This stopped him right in his tracks. Bewildered, the devil just stared at the man, not knowing what to make of it. And so he just, he just shrugged. The devil looked at the four and finally said with a laugh, Who is this mortal that, to think that he can stand against the might of hell? And with an evil sneer, the devil raised his hands and a thousand demons charged the gates. The man just coolly raised his weapon and began firing. With each shot, a demon fell. After half an hour of this, the devil stood alone. Furious, the devil shifted to his natural beastly form and with a mighty roar charged the gates himself. The man just laughed, smiled, pulled his K-bar combat knife and waited for the devil to come. After the devil fought against the man, he stood back and examined his wounds. He then looked up at the man and saw that he too had suffered wounds and looked about dead. So the devil charged again and again, but the man only smiled and brought his K-bar again to the ready. The devil stopped in his tracks and curiously looked at the man and then said, Who is this mortal who is not afraid of me and can stand against the might of hell? To this, St. Peter raised an eyebrow. Jesus smiled and looked at his father, and all the while the man went back to standing at attention. God laughed and said, If you really need to know, I will tell you. I took some of the fire I gave you and turned it into his fighting spirit. I took some of the stone that I put into the earth and I turned that into his will. I took the ice I put at the top of the world and I turned it into his nerves. And then I finished by giving him a willingness to sacrifice himself for the good of others. He will not quit until the job is done. He is by far my greatest creation. He is the best of men, and I call him a Marine. So the devil hung his head and walked back to hell. Now, although we know that all branches of the military are tough, right? And honorable and need to be praised. But there has always been something just slightly different, it seems, about the word Marine. The Marines are said to have the toughest boot camp out of all the military. In fact, the Marines uh, training station in San Diego is supposed to be the toughest in the nation. And one of the reasons that they have this reputation is because that from the time of 2004 until 2010, 688 Marine recruits broke their lower leg. What, what is commonly called the tibia fibula, uh, due to the, the rigorous marching and weight training and everything that they have to go through. So you can imagine that this extreme training is designed to either make or break 
a person, right? But sometimes it does even more. Sometimes it binds the men and women who serve stronger together as they face the extreme challenges posed by such physical training. Training that builds up not only their physical strength, but also their endurance and their stamina, and it also builds up their ability to guard their minds against much of the mental abuse that is thrown at them uh, by the trainers in order to make them a better person and a, and a better fighter. In fact, it makes them a better Marine overall. Since the year 1883, the Marines have had a motto that they live by, a motto that is drilled into them at boot camp, and a, that is a phrase called Semper Fidelis. This is a Latin term for always faithful. Semper Fidelis uh, symbolizes the lifelong commitment held by ever, every Marine for the Marine Corps and for their fellow Marines as well as for their country, America. It is also a promise reciprocated back to them by the Marine Corps to all Marines everywhere. You know, as Christians, we too must go through a period of intense training, a Christian boot camp, so to speak. After all, there are things that we too must learn, just as the military does, if we want to survive the battle against our enemy. And going through this time of testing and training builds up our stamina and our endurance, as well as teaches us how to protect not only our body, but also our minds as well. It builds up our knowledge and our strength regarding how to proceed in battle. You know, like the Marine boot camp, where many men and women have broken their bodies due to the extreme training, sometimes we must suffer some brokenness ourselves in our life, right? Like the 688 Marines in boot camp with tib-fib fractures, we often find that our legs become broken during this time. Broken to show us that we do not stand up because of our own strength, but to show us that on our knees is the only way we truly stand in the power of God. That shows us that the battle is not won with our own weak and frail bodies, bodies that are easily broken, but the battle is won only by the mighty power of God. You know, we also learn what the phrase Semper Fidelis means for us. After all, only when we are truly broken and down on our knees can we begin to learn what always faithful really means and how God is always faithful to be with us in and out of battle. We begin to learn what it means to be in a relationship, not only with, faithful, uh, not only with our faithful God, but also fighting alongside each other. You know, we fight back to back with other fellow Christian soldiers, and we learn what it means to always faithfully be lifting each other up in prayer and to be there to help and support each other. We join with those, especially whose battle right now may seem just a little bit tougher than ours knowing that one day in the future when the tables are turned and we are in the tough battle, that they will join in our battle with us rather than leave us alone. When we are in this spiritual boot camp or, or time of spiritual training, we learn what we must do in order to successfully be ready to go into the heat of battle. Let us just take a look at some of the rules of boot camp that I... I thought of that would help to make us a stronger soldier. Rule number one, learn to respect the authority in charge. And that's, I think, good for us in, in all of life, right? But especially here as we train. We must always learn and accept who the main authority is who is in charge of us. And one hint for us regarding this is that the authority figure who is in charge is never us, 
right? It is never us. In fact, the authority figure will never be another flesh and blood person. We need to be willing to look to God. God is our only authority in charge. So we must always look to him to learn what he is teaching us in this period of training. You know, some people might say, well, it's the pastor too. Well, you know, there's a lot of pastors who uh, are not always on the right path themselves. And so you don't want to take their authority as the strict authority. You want to make sure that you are taking God's authority. We do not take our instruction from those around us or look to other people as the authority in charge. We also have to keep reminding ourselves that it is not for us to assume the authority ourselves. Very important. I can't stress that enough. Many others will also try to tell us what we should or should not be doing. How many times have we had that? Right? You should go to this church or that church. You should read this Bible or that Bible uh, translation. You know, they will pose it on you in innocent ways as in a form of uh, well-meaning advice. But remember, they are not our authority. God is our authority. We look to the authority of God alone and take our orders only from our commander. That's rule number one for our training. And that commander is God. Listen to these words from Isaiah 44, 6. It says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no other God. There is no other God. And so there is no other authority ever. Number two, we have to train ourselves to not be constantly complaining about the rules and the circumstances that surround us. You know, life is hard. I understand that. But we have to remember that when we became Christians, we signed up for God's army. And when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were placed in God's army. Being in God's army does not make us immune to trouble. You know, we were talking about that, I think, uh, the other day uh, at Bible study. It does not make us immune to trouble. In fact, it only makes the enemy more determined to come against us to stop us. And so many times people will say, well, I'm a Christian now. I shouldn't be having all this problem, right? That is the devil trying to stop us, the enemy that we are preparing to fight. Jesus tells us in the Bible that we will continue to have trouble, trials, tribulation. John 16, 33 says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We also see in Matthew 5, 45, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. And he causes his son, even so he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, sends his reign on the righteous and the unrighteous. You know, as I said, too often as Christians we complain and we uh, bemoan the circumstances that surround us. We complain about the trials and the testing that we find ourselves in. We forget that it is only through these trials that we are strengthened. And it is only through these times of testing that we get our strongest testimony, right? Testimony. We can't have a testimony without a test, right? These are what builds us up to make us better and stronger soldiers for the Lord. We would never hear a Marine going around complaining about the battle that they are in while they're in the midst of it, right? They stand firm, they stand confident, and they continue to fight until the battle is won. Rule number three, stay focused on the task at hand. This time of preparing for battle can be physically and mentally excruciating. We should not let others distract us from our goal of being a soldier in God's army. We should not stop and pursue other avenues that are considered carnal or of this world. Remember, 
this world is not our home. Like many in the military, we here now are preparing to battle on foreign land. We should not get discouraged or give in to the temptation of quitting or going back to where we were before or the life that we had before or what we were doing before because we are different now and we should act different and we should remain focused and continue forward. Going back should never be an option. Remember that there are lives at stake here, including our own. Consider boot camp as a hurdle that you need to endure in order to gain spiritual freedom from the enemy who is holding everything and everyone captive. Remember, this means that even your family and your children can be in danger of being held captive by the enemy. We need to stay the course and stay focused. Quitting is not in the vocabulary of a Marine, and it should not be a part of our vocabulary either. We are to set our minds on things that are above, not on things that are of this earth, says Colossians 3.2. We can become distracted with the pleasures of this life very easily. When we stray away, we can become soft, we can lose our focus on the importance of the battle. Before long, before you know it, we find ourselves just uh, sitting on the sidelines in our lawn chairs watching everyone else do the fighting. We need to be on the field, not on the sidelines. Rule number four, don't let your health suffer. You know, this is very important because you will be no good in battle if you are too weak to fight. You need to be taking care of yourself. You need to be eating healthy every day, not just your regular food that nourishes your body, but also your spiritual food. Spiritual food, right? We need to read our Bibles. We need to listen to our worship music. We need to absorb the Word of God and surround ourselves with people who will encourage us and not bring us down. We need to make sure that we are getting enough rest because we will be tested in boot camp as well as in a battle. So if you have to be, so we have to be prepared and we have to be in shape and we have to be ready. So be careful what you expose yourself to. Monitor what you're reading. Monitor what you're watching on TV. These things can have a very negative effect on us. Monitor those who you are spending your time with. Some people, believe it or not, can be very toxic, right? We've all come across people, right, that can be very toxic and very draining, and we should keep our exposure to them limited or in small doses. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. Number five. I listed it as uh, keeping a low profile. You know, so many times you're, uh, you don't want to let the enemy know that you're there, right? You want to be able to uh, uh, learn how to kind of sneak in, um, uh, not cause a lot of attention being brought to yourself because it is not for us but for God um, to, to win the battle. You know, sometimes we have this, uh, explain a little bit, sometimes we have this strong desire to excel and to show off what we know and what we can do, especially if we think that we have uh, special knowledge or, or different skills. And this will often give us the impression that the battle is won because of us, right? That the, uh, the battle is won through our special skill set. Remember that it is not by our power or our knowledge or our might that the fight will be won. We need to remember that it is God working through us who has given us those special skills or that special knowledge, and it is only at his command that we use them. And it is only at his timing that we use them. We don't just go barreling in. Uh, we wait on the Lord. 
We have to be careful to not allow pride because that's so many times what follows. When we think that uh, we have this uh, strong skill or strong knowledge, we let pride continue to take over. We should not uh, allow pride to cripple our walk or uh, damage our preparations for battle. We should not be drawing attention and focus to ourselves, but instead we should be pointing people past us to God. Even in the heat of battle, remember, we can still be kind and courteous. We can still be compassionate. If someone hurts you, we should not be uh, returning evil for evil. Number six, this is an important one. Remember to breathe, right? Seems like it should be just kind of commonplace. I mean, we all breathe, right? How many times have we taken a breath since we've been in here? We, but this is a little bit different. We need to stop and take breaks to recharge ourselves. We need to breathe. Too often we just continue on and on and on with the work of God performing the mission that is laid out before us and striving to do all that we can for the church and for God until we just have given and given and given and there's just nothing left for us to give. Pausing to recharge not only helps with taking care of our physical bodies, but stopping to breathe clears our head, right? It clears our minds. It helps us to relax. It helps us to recharge our thinking and our focus. You know, when you just stop and stand back for just a moment, you can get a better, clearer picture of what is going on. We need to ask during these times for a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit to come in and to flow through us, to recharge us, to strengthen us. Exodus 33, 14 says, and he said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Remember, when we are doing things in our own strength, it's very exhausting and we will burn out very quickly. We need to stop and recharge and wait on the Lord because the battle is his. These were just a few of the things that... uh, I came up with that we need to remember as we prepare to get physically, mentally, and emotionally prepared to do battle. Maybe there's many others that uh, you, you can think of. Um, there may occasionally be times during the war when it seems as though the enemy has won, that we are defeated, but don't give in to that belief. He may have seemed to win the skirmish that we are in, but the war has already been won. This is definitely a demanding time and should be reserved for those with the willingness to engage and the determination to defeat all enemy strongholds to save the souls of those around us. For years, Marines have overcome fear and doubt. Through fatigue and scrutiny, they have won battles. Those who have joined their ranks have possessed the fight that is within them to win. With faith and courage, Marines execute each mission. Strategically and knowledgeably and soundly, they command and carry out each and every mission. Their values guide their actions and intensify their fight so that each battle they face, they can face it down. Now, what sets Marines apart from any other fighting force on the globe isn't just how they're trained, the equipment they use or their tactics. It's the fighting spirit that lives within each and every Marine and drives them to accept nothing less than victory in all situations. That determination to win, the eagerness to fight, and the high standard of excellence are all traits of a Marine. A determination that we two need to possess as we prepare to battle in God's army. You know, as we close, the Marines had a creed that was dedicated specifically to the rifle that they carried. However, since our Bible is our rifle, right, when we're doing battle, 
the word of God is what we use for ammunition. I would like to read you this creed that I found of the Marines, but instead of the word rifle, I will use the word Bible and replace it. So this is my Bible. All right. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My Bible is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it as I must master my life. Without me, my Bible is useless. Without my Bible, I am useless. I must read my Bible faithfully. My Bible and I know what counts in war is not the rounds we fire, the noise of our burst, nor the smoke that we make. We know that it is the hits that count, and so we will hit, and I'll add here with the truth of God, right? My Bible, I consider human, even as I, because it is my life, the living word of God, right? Thus I will learn it as a brother. It will strengthen my weaknesses. Its power is within the pages and within the words of red. I will keep my Bible close and ready, even as I am ready. We will become part of each other. Yes, we will. Before God, I swear to this creed, God, my Bible, and I are the defenders of my country. We are the masters of our enemy, for God is the savior of my life. So be it until the victory is won and there is no enemy. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we prepare for battle, as we uh, come into this time of training, Lord, help us to uh, remember each, uh, each rule. May we uh, apply it to ourselves so that we uh, become stronger and stronger so that we don't uh, faint along the way. Help us to uh, not charge ahead, but instead to wait for you. You are our commander in chief. We take our orders from you. And so we want to remain close and steadfast. Lord, help us to uh, read our Bibles, to uh, have better understanding and better knowledge for uh, your scriptures and your word. Your living word is our ammunition that knocks back the enemy uh, when the attacks come upon us. And Lord, may you strengthen and support us. Uh, may we also uh, look around us and help those uh, who have fallen, our fallen comrades beside us. And Lord, help us to uh, walk alongside those who need us uh, in this battle. And Lord, we know that even though sometimes uh, the battle will look as though we are losing, Lord, we know that uh, in your might and in your power, the battle has already been won. And so we will be victorious. Amen.